I'm not gonna have a crazy formula that I made that's gonna change the world, but it is an idea worth sharing. And before I start, I did figure out all this myself, but it's probably already known, because it's, I mean, like, with enough time, you can figure it out yourself. Why math? So first of all, math is extremely logical and it's universal. I mean, like, music is said to be universal, but there are some different note systems, but no matter where you go, even if you call it different things, one stone plus one stone is two stones. You can't get five stones out of that. Secondly, it's a language of science. I really, really like science. And then finally, um, math is a lot of patterns, which I find really interesting, and that's specifically what we're talking about today, and the patterns inside of parabolas. And parabolas, these are parabolas, as you can see, and they have a basic graph, which they can't be boiled down to, which is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. You can put in any number for those uh, letters, because they're variables, and except for a, it can't be zero, and then if you graph it, you'll get something that looks like this, and it's a parabola. Anyway, so I was in math class one day, and I wanted to figure out how to graph them faster, because it's math, it has patterns. And I took numbers and squared them, because it's y equals ax squared, and it moves exponentially like that. I took a number and I squared it, and I started subtracting it, and I found a pattern. If you take a square and you subtract the previous square, you get an odd number, which I call the corresponding odd number. It probably has a name, but I don't know it. But I call it that. Anyway, so, like, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16, 16 minus 9 is 5. You can also get this number if you take 3, which is our original number, times it by 2 and subtract 1. 3 times 2 is 6, minus 1 is 5. And that can be used for graphing, and I'll show that on the next slide, but I'm also going to explain how it can be used to find squares. So if you know a number, say uh, 144 we know is 12 squared, and we want to know what 13 squared is. Times 13 by 13 in our heads or on paper can be a little tedious, but we know that if we take 12 squared and add the next um, odd number, we'll get the right one. And so you can take 13, times it by 2, subtract 1, you get 25, add that to 144, and you get 169, which is 13 squared. So you can also use it to graph for how, as I said. If it's negative, you move down, but I'm going to say up because I'm used to that, even though I graph this one going down. So you move over 1, down 1, over 1, down 3, over 1, down 5, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, as you can see, and you can get infinite number of points, on a, and they're really nice points, too. They all line up well. And as I said, if the a is negative, you just times it by you just flip it. But what if a isn't one? Because if you time, you might have noticed that some of the parabolas don't have the same rate of growth. Well, if a is say two, then you just times the points by two. So you move over one up two, over one up six, over one up ten, which is the same three one three five. It just times by two. Next we have fractions, which will still work if you times it by a, but it won't be nice. I mean. You can define your own thing of nice numbers, but for our purposes, a nice number is a number that you can, like it's on one of the little X's on the crosses on the uh, axis where you can put it down. Well, if you graph the not nice points and the nice points, and then you just erase the ones that aren't so nice, you get another pattern. It's the exact same one, three, five, except you times both by two this time. So you move over two, up two, over two, up six, over two, up ten. And this is, um, y equals 2a, 2x squared. Um, and then, also, if it's y equals 3 halves x squared, um, this is 1 half x squared, sorry, um, what you can do is you can times it by 3 and both sides by 2. So you move over 2, up 6, over 2, up 18, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You also might be noticing that this is the exact same graph as y equals x squared, except bigger. And that is tr true. And actually, all parabolas are the same. This may sound weird, because you saw a while ago, they come in many different shapes and sizes, uh, but like circles, they're all the same, and squares. I mean, triangles are not the same, and that might sound weird to you, but if you take a square and you rotate it and you size it, but keep the sides the same in proportion, and put the centers in the same place, you can make all squares that ever existed line up. But triangles, you can make some line up, but a lot of them will have different sides, and so even if you get them to the exact same everything, they won't line up perfectly, but parabolas will. And this is a little bit hard to see, but um, I don't, it would be easier if you could like, take something to measure it out. But uh, this is zoomed out by two. And as you can see, these parabolas look, ex these are the same parabolas. They look like they're times by two. So this outer one, which is one, y equals one half x squared, now looks like it's y equals x squared, proportionally. So if you look at this one, and then you look at the old y equals x squared, they look the same. That's just really interesting. And what purpose is this? So first, for most of you, and for me, and for middle schoolers and high schoolers, you can use it to 
graph parabolas really fast, as I've demonstrated. As long as you know the vertex and you know what A is, you can graph them in 20 seconds. And secondly, the focus, and I'll get to that in a second. And probably more undiscovered, unknown to me, who knows, ways, but I don't know. Anyway, a focus is a point where, say you have a 3D parabola, it, like a metal sheet that's in the shape of a parabola. If you shine a light down it, all the light will be reflected through this one point at a certain point in time. And so you can use it to concentrate laser beams or sunlight. And that's important because that you can concentrate the sunlight into a pipe and heat the pipe up. And if the pipe has water, you can make steam. And steam is important because steam is where energy comes from. Coal actually isn't used to like, you don't just put coal into some sort of blender and electricity comes out. You burn the coal, which produces steam. The steam pushes turbines, and that creates electricity because of magnetism. I'm not going to explain it. It's really hard to explain. Anyway, but yeah, so we can use the steam for the same thing. And I know it's kind of fast, but hope it all adds up. Thank you. <laughs>